Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, 2015 is starting faster than most years. Um, a lot is happening in the sport of boxing. First, let me say this. Let me congratulate Andre Ward and Rock Nation. I think that that's a big union. I think that's big news for the sport. If Floyd Mayweather goes forward with his plans of retiring within the next nine months, right? Keep in mind, Mayweather plans on fighting twice in 2015, once in May, once in September, and then he's going to ride off into the sunset. If Floyd does that, then in my opinion, a very strong argument can be made that the best fighter in the sport pound for pound would be Andre Ward. Right? I feel that Ward's skills are outside the box. I believe pound for pound, Ward is better than fighters like Guillermo Rigondeo, right? Because I think Ward has a certain rough house element to his game that a finely tuned technician like Rigundio can't match. Understand my list of the best in boxing pound for pound is very different than mainstream media's, right? I'm sure your list is too, right? Mainstream media is really a consensus driven operation uh, each of us know of up-and-coming fighters who might not have crowds, but who we feel are elites, right? My list includes Andre Ward, James DeGale, who is right there, right? Terrence Crawford, Tyson Fury, people like that, right? But just understand, you know, if Floyd Mayweather leaves the sport, and if someone put a gun to my head and said, who is the best pound for pound. Who can you rely on to make quick adjustments to fight inside or outside, right? To move his feet and use movement to avoid punches, to uh, get up on a guy's chest, smother a guy like an Alan Green, like a Mikael Kessler, right? World-class fighter. Smother a guy so the other guy feels like Mike Tyson felt against Evander Holofield. Who is so good that he can switch literally to a southpaw stance and stay there for prolonged periods of time and still have his defense? My answer would be Andre Ward. Let's just talk about how big the signing is too. Right? You'd be very hard-pressed to find a more exciting division right now than the super middleweight division. I would argue that another division that's hard to beat is the division one floor up, the light heavyweight division. Let's just focus on the opportunities at super middle. I believe super middle has two of the best fighters pound for pound in the sport, Ward and DeGale. But understand, I believe Carl Frotch holds more belts than those guys, right? Understand, Carl Frotch has a nemesis out there. Frotch is talking about how he schooled a guy in the rematch. I don't think he did. He certainly won the rematch. But I believe Frotch privately knows that if George Groves ever gets his act together, right, stops losing his head in fights, actually starts using his natural advantages, right? His foot speed, his quickness. George Groves could be a force. Of course, Groves is the only man to have beaten DeGale, at least according to the judges. And you have the mystery, and it is a mystery, of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., one of the biggest cash cows in the sport. Not to mention a family that's rapidly becoming one of the first families of boxing, right? You understand 
that the Mayweather clan has Floyd the fighter and then has former fighters Roger Floyd senior right who are in the training business right that's different than the Durrell family where Andre right and his brother Anthony are elite fighters in the same division Anthony has a belt think about it right Andre might actually be the better of the two brothers and they're in the division with Andre Ward and James DeGale right so just in terms of boxing opportunities the super middleweight division is a bonanza also don't be too thrown by Carl Frotch saying hey I might retire if I don't get the fight I want that's a tradition in boxing right you know the champion saying look people know I'm the champion people know I'm at least championship level even if there are those out there who believe that an Andre Ward or a James DeGale could beat me they also know that I'm the one who has the belt they know that if they want tough competition for those guys someone's gonna have to knock on my door so understand it's a long time boxing tradition for a champ with public legitimacy like a Carl Frotch to say you know what I'll give up a title or I'll give up the titles and then I'll come back when there's a fight that I fancy right Jeffries the guy who fought Jack Johnson back in the day right Ray Leonard uh, countless guys have been retired Henry Maskey have been retired and then will come back for specific fights the key isn't whether or not Frotch is retired in quotes right the key is whether Frotch is willing to fight big fights once the dust clears he might be right Lennox Lewis is still hinting that he might come back right I doubt it now but the point is that's the way fighters are right they feel they're the best they love the competition right when they step back from the sport if they see an opportunity if they see a guy that they think they can beat then they'll come back David Hay right now right Hay announced he was retiring from the sport David Hay from time to time will sign contracts to fight people like Tyson Fury then of course Hay will reconsider I guess get injured etc I'm not saying the injuries are fake but let's just say you know Bernard Hopkins another one you have a long list of guys who say look when I hit a certain age when I hit a certain point uh, when I have kids I'm gonna retire and yet you still see them in the sport didn't Bernard Hopkins promise his mother he'd be out of the sport several years ago right so my point is simply this Carl Frotch is in play in my opinion you wouldn't be talking about fighting Chavez Jr. if you didn't think you could beat Chavez Jr. right if you didn't have some excitement at the prospect of facing that challenge now let me point out all of the guys at 168 could gain weight to fight at 175 right I feel today Andre Ward beats Adonis Stevenson, a champion at 175 pounds. Understand Sergei Kovalev has only gone past the eighth round once in his career. Right? He's not as seasoned as, let's say, a Frotch or a Ward who have been through wars, right, that have gone longer than eight rounds. Right? Keep in mind, the only guy who pushed Kovalev was Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins is a senior citizen by boxing standards right he's not bringing the kind of rough and tumble game that some of these younger Lions would bring understand too, Carl Frotch in a sense has unfinished business with Jean Pascal Frotch beat Pascal in the past 
right? Understand Pascal might end up with the light heavyweight title. He has a fight against Kovalev, and then the winner is supposed to take on Adonis Stevenson, right? The point is that Rock Nation signing of Andre Ward adds further fire to a combustible super middleweight and light heavyweight situation. Right? You need to keep an eye on that. Rock Nation is quickly becoming a major player in the sport. Now, let me break ranks right here. Okay? Because I believe the sport of boxing is being misreported. We have a great set of people here online. Right? I go to sources here online before I listen to the mainstream media. Right? I encourage people to be more critical of the sport of boxing. Let's talk about other developments. Right, A lot has happened. Golden Boy has settled with Richard Schaefer. That's big news. Richard Schaefer is going to be back in play. I don't know what the contracts say. I don't know what the timetables are. There might be a non-compete clause or some other foolishness going on there. But just to understand that I thought Richard Schaefer was one of the more forward-thinking guys in the sport of boxing. He's back in play. Understand, too, you know, whoever the press says won the feud between the two and stuff like that, in my opinion, and let's have opinions here, Golden Boy has already lost this feud. First, there's the human capital loss. I thought Richard Schaefer was the perfect person to lead a promotional company, whether it's Golden Boy or some other promotional company. I thought this guy was savvy. This guy got along with fighters. He made big fights, entertaining fights, great style matchups. Everyone seemed to make a lot of money. The casino, the promoter, the fighters. Uh, what's wrong with all of that, right? So when you have a superstar as part of your organization and that superstar walks out the door, I don't care what the terms of the uh, settlement are. You're losing a superstar. Golden Boy lost a superstar here. In my opinion, Golden Boy lost. Understand, too, the world of business is a bit genteel. Right? People will think, and I'll be blunt here, people will think that you suck, that you're making mistakes, that you've cost them money, and they'll politely, as politely as possible, give some other reason for withdrawing their investment in your company. Right? Because the point is, the world has karma. What goes around comes around. Right? I could think that, you know, I'm in a business deal with you and I could think you've made mistakes and you're not ready for this business deal. But I could also realize that I might see you down the road in some other opportunities. You hear the term repeat player. Or I might even realize that there might come a day where in the job that you're not getting done right now, you actually learn how to do it. You actually become one of the best in the industry and I might try to reinvest. Well, just to understand, two sophisticated investors, these are guys with, you know, seven, eight-figure portfolios, right? Two sophisticated investors decided to pull their money from Golden Boy. I know it sounds mundane. You need to keep an eye on that. You need to always keep an eye on what smart money is doing whether it's boxing or other things, right? Because, you know, there's the public story, what the press is reporting, and then you look around and you see what private self-interested investors are doing. To me, that's more legitimate than some public story being spun by people without skin in the game, right? And so the point is simply this. You have some sophisticated investors who had their money with Golden Boy when Richard Schaefer was there guiding the ship. 
There was a fallout at Golden Boy where Richard Schaefer then left the company. Guess what? Big money investors, at least two of them, left with Richard Schaefer. Right? They thought their money was better served someplace else. Right? You need to pay close attention to that. Right? So the point is the world of big time boxing promoters is rapidly evolving. Now let's go one step further. Right? Understand that math is math. Right? A dollar is a dollar. Right? Talent is talent. Now it's clear when we talk about the music industry, when we talk about some of the most talented people in the music industry in the last, let's say, three decades, George Michael, Prince, right, countless others, Bill Withers, if you want to go back even further, right, <coughs> it's clear that these artists would have been better off once they made their names, right? Once you knew who Prince was, right? Once you knew who Bill Withers was, it's clear that once these artists broke through, they would have been better off negotiating their record deals. I know young people are saying, record? What's that? Okay, their albums. They would have been better off negotiating their albums on an album-by-album -album basis. Right? These long-term deals with record industries right, hurt them financially. Right? Ludacris the rapper years ago talked about how some of these people, after getting big advances from record companies, then found out that they didn't even own their name, right? Because the way these contracts are geared is, you know, you're actually signing away the use of your name to the record company. So you had Prince, right? Understanding that because of his long-term deal, he couldn't record using his own name for other companies. So then, of course, he became the artist formerly known as Prince, right, in the mainstream media. There was a period there where he was throwing out symbols, right? You have a lot of fighters today who are arguing with their promoters and who don't feel that they're getting fair market value because their deals were multi-fight deals, right? Multi-fight deals. And that maybe at the beginning of the contract, the fighter was unknown. But now the fighter is known. And the fighter understands, hey, I should be making more money here. Fighters known as me have higher market value than the purses I've been receiving. Right? And then, of course, the promoter will say, and I understand both sides of the argument, the promoter will say, hey, I paid you beyond top dollar when you were unknown and couldn't draw flies. I was losing money at the beginning of this contract. I gave you a bonus when you didn't have market power. You cashed that check. You took my money. You agreed to this five-fight deal. And now that I'm getting my benefit of the bargain on the back end, after helping build your career, right? The reason why we're having this conversation on, you know, how you deserve more money now is because I've built your career to where you're getting more money now. You want to pull the plug on the deal after you receive your profits before I get all of mine, right? 
It's a five fight deal. I took a five fight risk with you. How could you now try to deny me big fights on the back end of the deal after we've built up your career to this point? Right? So yeah, there are arguments on both sides of the aisle. But just understand, I believe, the way life should work. I think an artist like Prince, I'm sure he has his preferred record companies who he feels comfortable with, relationships with execs and stuff like that. I think the way life should work is a guy like Prince should be able to opt out of long-term deals and then on a album-by-album -album basis, right, get the top deal with whoever he wants, who he feels comfortable with, record companies who he understands are going to distribute his album in such a way that, you know, the album gets buzzed, the album gets played, people are aware of the album, and he can build a tour around the album, right? Everyone can get compensated if when an artist is unknown, you build into the contract buyout clauses that give the artist the opportunity to purchase his or her freedom. And then, just to make sure that things stay independent and creative, right? Well-known artists should be able to proceed on a album by album, event by event, or in the case of boxing, fight by fight basis without being encumbered, and this is just my opinion, it's an editorial, without being encumbered by some below market long-term contract with a promoter, right? The promoter can win and the fighter can win if things are negotiated on a fight by fight basis. The promoter gets the goodwill that comes from promoting a superstar like Prince, right? Or Floyd Mayweather before Mayweather promotions blew up and he was working with Richard Schaefer and Golden Boy, right? Golden Boy wins because they're promoting a lucrative event. They're making money. They're increasing their name. Floyd Mayweather wins because he knows an experienced promoter is handling the promotional side of things. He gets the benefit of Golden Boy's expertise. He also gets the freedom of knowing that for future fights, right, he can go with the promoter of his choice. As long as Golden Boy does a great job in his eyes, then Golden Boy can continue on. Right? If they start slipping and taking him for granted, and unfortunately that's what happens with long-term deals where fighters don't have contractual rights to actually leave the contract, right? then Floyd should be free to go with other promoters. Now let me say this, and I know it's going to be controversial. I know that many people out there have criticized the practice that some managers have of having fighters who are not signed to long-term deals with promotional companies and of negotiating deals with promoters on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. So, for example, I mentioned Floyd Mayweather, right? Mayweather now fights under the banner of Mayweather Promotions, which is getting bigger and bigger. But there was a time where Mayweather was fighting on Golden Boy promotional events. Golden Boy was the promoter for many Mayweather fights. <coughs> but Mayweather was a promotional free agent. He didn't have a long-term deal with Golden Boy. In my opinion, that's the best business model for superstars in the sport. Right? As I like to say, if you go to a mall and people at the mall look around and easily recognize you, right? Floyd Mayweather in a mall, Miguel Cotto in a mall, right? Vladimir Klitschko in a mall. Um, if you're that level of fighter, Andre Ward in a mall, 
right? Who, you know, people in the mall look around and say, hey, look, look over there. That's Floyd Mayweather. Then in my opinion, you don't need a long-term deal with a promoter. Right? What's the point? Just like it would be a win-win for Prince to say, hey, um, you know, Warner Brothers or whoever, will you guys release my next album? I just want to do this on an album-by-album -album basis, right? I want to keep you on your toes. I'll be on my game. We're in that album release together. You know I enjoy our relationship. Um, you know I'm a platinum selling artist you know will you release my next album just like that's a win-win for Prince and the album company because the album company would know hey we're associating with a popular artist we're getting our name out there we're associating with a great album right a great fan base that's the way it should be in boxing this is not a sports league a team sports league like the NFL or uh, Major League Baseball where people need to lock in to long-term deals because there's a collective bargaining agreement and um, you know a, a, things like that this is different here the talent is individualized right here the fighter is the team so let me say this I do hope as you look at the fallout between Golden Boy and Richard Schaefer as you hear about fighters who supposedly are leaving Golden Boy even though they don't have contracts with Golden Boy right I want you to ask yourself the question would Golden Boy have been better off without these fighters without helping a Floyd Mayweather in his career is is Golden Boy better off closing the door on fighters who show up and say hey I don't want to sign a long-term promotional agreement with you rather I just want to go fight by fight right and I would like for you to promote my next fight is Golden Boy better off closing the door on fighters like that or embracing that business model I would argue it's the latter right you don't turn your back on talent if Miguel Cotto knocks on your door and says won't you please promote my next fight your answer should be yes you know this guy has sold out Madison Square Garden you know this is an opportunity to show the world what you can do as a promoter you know the fans are paying money to watch the fight you know the TV networks are paying money to broadcast the fight where's the downside now it's only in the weird world of boxing and the weird world of the mainstream media in boxing that we hear there's something wrong with that arrangement right that we hear that it's a scandal that a fighter fighting under a promoters promotional banner for one day doesn't have a long-term contract with that promotional outfit right it's only in the world of boxing that a guy like Richard Schaefer, who's bringing in Adrian Broner and a bunch of other fighters, right, in the front door to fight under Golden Boy's promotional banner, and who has cultivated a great relationship with these fighters, where the fighters say, hey, you know what, for my next fight, I'm going to go with Golden Boy. They hooked me up on my last fight. I like how that fight was promoted, right? It's only in the world of boxing. That that kind of behavior can get a Richard Schaefer in trouble. That that kind of relationship can actually get, you know, Richard Schaefer sued. Could actually lead to Richard Schaefer 
while on top of the game dealing with elite fighters, right? Floyd Mayweather and others. It's only in the crazy world of boxing that that kind of deal making by Richard Schaefer bringing in Floyd Mayweather to, you know, fight on shows promoted by Golden Boy. It's only in boxing that that leads to Richard Schaefer getting a divorce from Golden Boy Promotions. Right? Richard Schaefer should have gotten a medal. Not criticism. Right? Golden Boy should have been paying Richard Schaefer more money. Not less money. Floyd's manager, I don't even name him here. Floyd's manager should have been congratulated for getting top dollar for his client without tying his client in to a long-term deal, right? Because there are many fans who would show up, I'm sure, to a Floyd Mayweather fight saying, oh, I can't wait to see Mayweather fight the opponent. You don't show up saying, oh, yeah, yeah let me just attend this Golden Boy promotion uh, who's fighting? Oh, oh, Floyd's fighting? Come on, you're not there because of the promoter. I would argue you're there because of the guys in the ring. So let me say this. If you're just starting out, if you go to the mall and no one knows who you are, right? If you're trying to use a credit card and people actually ask you for identification, if you look at your bank account and you see feathers and some promoter was saying, look, give me five fights, I'll give you, you know, high six, seven figures up front, right? And if you're looking at your girlfriend and she's pregnant, you're looking at your landlord, he has his hands stretched out, you're a little late on the rent and you need the money. Okay, look, I'm not going to begrudge anyone in that situation from signing a long term deal. I would, though, of course, encourage you to have outs on the deal, right? Uh, where you have the option to get out of the deal. Understand the option should run two ways. It shouldn't be one of these deals where only the promoter has the option to extend the deal, right? But if you're a different person, if you're a person who shows up at the mall and you're fighting off people who are seeking your autograph, Right. If, if you go to reach for your identification, you know, you, you give them a credit card and you go to reach for your identification and the cashier says, hey, I know who you are. I don't need to see your ID. Can I take a photo with you? Right. If if you show up at the arena for your fights and you look around and you see the place is packed. Right. If Max Kellerman's in the ring with you after the fight and he's asking you, who are you going to fight next? And. You know, before you get the sentence out, the crowd is cheering or the crowd is booing. You realize you have that kind of impact. Then what's wrong with going on a fight by fight basis? Right. Understand there's upside, there's downside. Right. Obviously, you make more money if you continue winning than you do if you lose. But the guys with a lot of market power in the sport, they know who they are. Right? Understand everyone is trying to make a profit. Boxing is a business. The dollars have to make sense. Right? So the point is this. Why sign away years of your life, more years of your life, when you're already an established star? Prince was on top in the music world when he had to step away from recording albums because of promotional problems. You don't want that to happen to you. Also, when you're on top, shouldn't there be a bidding process for your future fights? Shouldn't you be able to say, okay, well, I want promoters competing against each other for the rights to my next fight. So, let me just say, I think the Richard Schaefer situation is interesting. 
I'm not even sure if I understand Golden Boy's arguments, right? You have someone in your organization and he is bringing in the biggest cash cows in the sport of boxing to fight under your promotional banner. Sure, your company would make more money if they were under long-term contracts. But you also understand that the fighter might not want to sign a long-term deal. So you're building up a relationship, a successful relationship, with fighters who like you and who like your promotional company and who are coming to you for their big fights. That gets you fired? Really? Let me just point out, again, follow the smart money. Richard Schaefer had a falling out with Golden Boy. Smart money investors started leaving that operation. Right? I hope to the talented fighters out there who've already established them themselves. Miguel Cotto, for example. I hope they understand that, in my opinion, they're better off going fight by fight. Right? Have great managers negotiating fights, right? But go fight by fight. I believe you're better off than locking yourself in with a promoter. And then, of course, think about how limiting that is. How many times have you heard that a big fight that you want to take place isn't taking place because fighters have problems with the other guy's promoter and simply refuse to do business with them. Don't you want to avoid that dynamic? Anyway, that's my take. Let me hear yours. Right? Just understand that these contracts are so ridiculous that as Ludacris has pointed out, sometimes these fighters can't even, or at least these artists in music, can't even use their names for their own albums if they do it with different labels, right? Let's just hope that boxing bucks that trend, right? Superstars should get superstar treatment. They shouldn't be tied into long-term deals that they can't get out of, right? There should be a bidding process for your fights. You should be able to work with who you want without being contractually obligated to do so fight after fight. Let me close in saying, in the 1980s, boxing superstar, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, had only a handshake deal with Bob Arum in the later part of that decade. In other words, when Hagler was going to fight Sugar Ray Leonard, he could have picked another promoter. But understand that Hagler trusted Bob Arum. The man had a great relationship that transcended written contracts. Right? The two men talked. Marvin Hagler wanted the promoter he trusted. Bob Arum in top rank to do the Ray Leonard fight. Right? Think about it. Right? Bob Arum understood that top rank was better off doing business with Marvin Hagler than telling Hagler, Dog, you need to sign a five fight deal. I need you under a long term contract. Right? Even with promoters who have long-term deals with elite talent, handshake agreements have ruled the roost in the past at times. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.